Hello, my name is Ann DeSantis, and I'm the director for the St. Raymond Onatis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. It's so great to be here with you for this After Divorce Conference. The foundation that I represent, our tagline is Spiritual Accompaniment for Families in Crisis, and especially those who are affected by divorce and separation. So I commend you for being here with us on this conference. It's such a blessing for me to be here. And my talk is on 10 tips for healing for adult children of divorce. And I myself am an adult child of divorce. Many, many years ago, uh, at the age of seven, uh, my parents split up. I was the oldest of four. And yes, it did have an effect on me in my life. But with these tips that I'm going to give you for healing are ones that people can take not only from a young age, but all the way through your life. And Many times people who are affected by divorce, if you yourself are getting separated or have been divorced or annulled, sometimes come from broken families. So I'm speaking to you too, to your children, or for those that you may know who could use this kind of help and support. I would like to invite you also to please go to the website where I'm the director. Our website is nonatus.org. And as I said, that's the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation. We were formed through a religious order, and if you've never heard of it, it's called the Mercedarian Religious Order, and their website is orderofmercy.org, just so that you can check that out sometime, but it's a really beautiful ministry headquartered in the Philadelphia area, which is where I'm from. So during my talk here, just for these short 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to give you, as I said, these 10 tips for healing for those who are adult children of divorce. And uh, the first tip that I'd like to offer you is just to accept the past as it happened, uh, as difficult as it is and as it was, because we can't really change the past and we can't change where we came from. And many times as Catholics, maybe you see families or friends of yours who their marriages seem so good and their family life, and you might look back and say, well, I didn't come from that kind of upbringing and I don't understand how I can live out my life after all I've been through as an adult child of divorce. Now, we also know that everyone experiences different in terms of being the adult child of divorce. Sometimes there's divorces where it, it's a, a, a little bit more simplified than others. And uh, my own experience is, is mine was maybe someplace uh, in the middle uh, because it was difficult for my parents, of course, and difficult for me. But I'm also blessed that I kept my faith and so grateful that to this day that I've, I've held on to my faith. So uh, that, that's a real blessing. And I'm inviting you to do the same, to hold on to your faith, no matter what's happened in your life. And if your children are those children who are, you know, those who are affected in that way, uh, please have them reach out to us because uh, that is what we do. As I said, the spiritual accompaniment for families in crisis. Uh, when we deal with the adult children of divorce, though, it is uh, specific, specifically for those 18 or older. So for the younger children, of course, you know, they'd have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. So my second tip is to continue to pray for your family, family of origin, but be patient and don't look for results. You know, as the adult child of divorce, you know, I'm, I'm over the age of 50. And yes, even throughout our lives, we're still dealing with being that adult child of divorce and the ramifications. But there's a positive spin too, because God is, is all loving and, and all powerful. And he's with us through those difficult times. So even if you, you are that adult child of divorce and you're still seeing it being played out, uh, some of that negativity from the past. It doesn't mean that your future can't be better. It doesn't mean that your present can't be better because it can. So I would just ask you to continue to pray for your family of origin. And also, even if they're not people of faith, your example means so much. Your sacrifices mean so much. So take that with you when you think about your family is just to offer those prayers for them. Uh, number three is to seek help or counseling if you need it. Uh, a cat, preferably a Catholic counselor. I'm sure that there's some that are even on our, our site here on the adult, uh, excuse me, on the after divorce uh, 
event site. So you might want to check that out. Some good counselors or spiritual directors. Uh, that's also someone that can offer some help to you. Through the foundation that I work for, we offer free spiritual consultation with our spiritual moderator. His name is Father Ken Breen. He is a Mercedarian friar located in New York. So if you're interested in connecting with us, I would say just send me an email. And if you want to jot that down on your phone or on a piece of paper, uh, my email address is director.srnf at gmail.com. Now that SRNF, that stands for the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation. So please reach out to me. I'll even give you my uh, cell number for work is 215 870 9913. Again, 215 870 9913. Send me a text and let me know that you'd like to set up a free spiritual consultation because we've talked to so many people who are affected by divorce and separation and even adult children of divorce too. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. My fourth point for tips for healing is to pray for the faith of your parents, but be patient. Now, sometimes when a divorce happens, especially I'm talking to an adult child of divorce, is that people can be detached from their faith, unfortunately. And I've seen it myself, but it doesn't mean that there is not hope. So that's my big message for you on these 15 minutes during my talk, is that sometimes you hear all of the negative ramifications of adult children of divorce and the long-term effects. And yes, it's so true. It, it is absolutely true. But my message to you today is let's take a positive spin, knowing that God can help us to move in better directions so that we can hang on to our faith and spread the faith and just know that God can help us to live it out. So continue to pray for your parents, no matter where they are, uh, whether they're people of faith or people who are away, just be patient. Number five is in developing your own relationships to carry your faith with you. So I don't know if you are a person who's developed another relationship, if you are an adult child of divorce and you are in a relationship to make sure to live out your faith. And if I'm speaking to someone here who is uh, separated or divorced or annulled, I say that to you too. And I know that's why you're here. That's why you're here on this conference because you want to hold on to your faith and your faith means something to you. So connect to some great resources too. I mean, the person who invited me to be a part of this conference, her name is Rose Sweet and a lot of you know her. And she offers also wonderful spiritual consultation. So please do go to her website at rosesweet.com and make that appointment because she will spend that time with you and you can see some of the great offerings that she has there through her writing and also through her website too. So just remember that in developing those relationships that hold on to your faith, learn about your faith. There's some, so many great Catholic resources here and all the talks that are being given on this day are places that you can watch over and over again and be enriched. You know, it's all about being enriched in our faith and really believing, you know, that God is with us no matter what. Even if you're the adult child of divorce, it doesn't mean you can't have the most positive life possible. And uh, it doesn't mean there isn't challenges. I mean, I myself, um, I have not been divorced. I am married to my husband, Angelo, for 31 years. I say hello to him if he's watching. And our family, our wonderful daughters. So uh, it doesn't mean that we haven't had our challenges. We have. And sometimes even my past of being that adult child of divorce has, has affected me. But that doesn't mean that, we, that I can't go and that you can't go forward no matter where, what has happened is that, that ho the Holy Spirit is with us. Number six is uh, not all families are perfect, even those who have not experienced divorce or separation. I think that's really important. Because sometimes as people of faith, we see friends or family members or people that we see on social media that have wonderful relationships and divorces so far from their, their language or what they've uh, experienced. But just remember that even within their families and their relationships, it doesn't mean that there isn't pain. It doesn't mean that there isn't struggle. And sometimes what we see on social media isn't the full story. I think some of you know what I'm talking about. 
especially those who are very devoted to their faith. And we see uh, those beautiful pictures of families and think, you know, maybe that's not me or maybe that's not us. You know, what we see on social media isn't always the full truth. So just remember that. It doesn't mean that just because you didn't come from this so-called perfect Catholic family or perfect family, you know, it's you really always being perfect in love, isn't it? I mean, in my opinion, that's what it is. Perfect in love, perfect in letting God love us for who we are, no matter where we have been. Uh, there's always the sacrament of confession. I know there is also a wonderful video on this site that you can watch from Father Matthew Phelan, who will be talking about confession. So I invite you to please check that out. He's a Mercedarian friar, which is the foundation that I'm the director for. He's with uh, that particular religious order. And as I said, again, you can learn about them at orderofmercy.org. So that's another one. Uh, number seven is find a patron saint. And if you don't have one, research it. There's so many wonderful saints that we can intercede to every day. And I am going to make a suggestion to you uh, to please check out and learn about St. Raymond Nonatus. He is the patron saint of Christian families. He's also the patron saint of expectant mothers, and also for those who are falsely accused. Now, if you are going through a divorce or separation or an old, think about that last one that I said as be those who are falsely accused, because sometimes people who go through those divorces uh, are far falsely accused. And I know that if someone who's watching, who's a friend of the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation, uh, we've talked about this before on some of our own videos, so just think and pray about that because uh, St. Raymond Anatis is the perfect saint to intercede for you if you are affected by divorce and separation. And you can learn about him actually right on our own website. We have a little page there about St. Raymond Anatis. So check it out. He was uh, in and around the time of about 800 years ago from Barcelona, Spain. Uh, again, go to nonatis.org on our saint and you will learn about him. Number eight is to offer God your sufferings. I mean, we've heard the old adage to offer it up to God, offer your pain and your suffering, but it couldn't be more true for an adult child of divorce. And if you're a parent watching this and thinking of your kids, you know, maybe it, it would be difficult to say to your child who's uh, suffering as a result of a divorce or separation that you're experiencing to tell them to offer it up. Maybe they don't understand what that means, but in time you will. It takes time in order to really understand what does that mean to offer up my pain and my suffering. And I'll just give you a very quick story is that right around the time that my parents got divorced, uh, it was my first communion. I was uh, seven years old. And I definitely remember uh, that personal faith and relationship that I experienced with Jesus when I received the Eucharist. So if you have a young child and you're going through that divorce or separation, Make sure that your children also stick with their faith. Make sure that they're uh, attending the sacraments, attending mass. Uh, I, I know that we're going through a pandemic right now, but uh, mass has been, uh, been available in many of our dioceses and archdioceses. So if you're able to get there, get there and make sure that your kids and that you are receiving the beautiful sacraments of our faith. Number nine is to pray the rosary. And I think this is very important uh, in, in your faith life. And in rem remembering that our Blessed Mother is with you, remembering to offering that rosary. You know, some of the archdioceses and dioceses are offering even online rosaries. I know I've seen a lot of them on Facebook. Uh, my own archdiocese uh, in Philadelphia has been doing a nightly rosary from Monday through Thursday. If you want to learn about that, you can go to uh, archphila.org. And I think it's phillyevange.org is actually the, the website for that rosary. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I make a, a shout out to uh, the Archdiocese of Philadelphia for the great work they're doing. But please do pray that rosary every night. If you can pray it with your, with your kids, I think that's a great thing. But make sure that, you know, that you're offering those prayers. You know, sometimes if I have a busy day and I can't uh, make the time to do that full rosary all together at once, you can also break it up in two decades. So if there's ever a crazy day, I'll remember that you can offer one or two decades throughout the day too. I mean, best to do it all at once, but uh, remember to pray your rosary. And my last point is to just remember 
that God loves you right now, right here, as you are with all of your pain, with all of your suffering, with all you've been through, and with all of your imperfection. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves your parents. He loved you during the time of a parent's divorce or of your own divorce or separation. Uh, the Catholic Church cares. And you know, that's what this After Divorce Conference is all about, to let you know that the Catholic Church cares deeply about you. And we're all about something called spiritual accompaniment. And that word came about uh, through our Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, brought that into a greater light with some of his own writings, is that, you know, it's all about that one-to-one -one relationship with, with people. And that's how we can spread the love of God to all we meet. It starts with that one-to-one. -one. And, you know, God has that one-to-one -one relationship directly with us, too. So please don't ever forget that, how much you're loved and cared for. And we at the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation, too, we would love to hear from you. I can't stress enough to let you know that this organization that I represent as the director, uh, we are all about spiritual accompaniment for families in crisis. If you know someone who could use our help, please reach out. I want to emphasize again, our help is completely free. I mean, obviously, if you can give us a donation, we would appreciate that. It's on the front page of our website at nonatis.org. But we offer that free spiritual accompaniment, free appointments. We make one-hour appointments where you can talk to a priest. Please reach out to me again at my email address, and that's uh, director.srnf at gmail.com, 215-870-9913. I also mentioned to you that we have wonderful podcasts that you can listen to. Our YouTube channel is Philly Nonatus. Now, Philly stands for Philadelphia, which is where I'm from. Uh, so go to YouTube and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I will just mention two more things that you can uh, learn about is uh, a, a weekly podcast that I do and also an online TV show. One more thing here. It's called Sewing Hope. Uh, that's the podcast, S-E-W-I-N-G, Hope podcast. You can subscribe at Patchwork Heart Ministry on YouTube with my co-host, Bill Snyder. And even for some of you who are actually speakers on this event, uh, we would love to possibly host you on the Sewing Hope podcast. Uh, that's on Tuesdays, 9 a.m. Eastern, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern. And also, please check out my one-hour weekly show on Fiat Ministry Network. It's called Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis, Friday nights, 8.30 Eastern. It's a live Facebook show. So I look forward to uh, maybe seeing you join me there each week as I interview great Catholic speakers and authors and nonprofits. And, you know, it's all about saying yes to Jesus Christ because Fiat Ministry Network, uh, which is one of the networks that I represent, it's all about saying yes to Jesus Christ. And you know, that's what this talk is all about. These 10 tips for healing is that you is saying yes to Jesus Christ. God loves you. We love you at the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation. And I thank you so much for joining us for this after divorce conference. Please connect with us and you have a wonderful day. This is Anne DeSantis. God bless.